The year is 2001 and Polaroid has gone through a bit of a rough patch. Luckily, they just launched their new hit camera, the Polaroid iZone. <laughs> Polaroid needed to sustain the success if they wanted to survive. So, the big wigs at Polaroid had an idea. They came up with this. A camera that was so bad that it bankrupted the company. Join me as we take a closer look at the dumpster fire that led to Polaroid's bankruptcy. Polaroid was founded by Edwin Land in 1937, and by the 1970s, the word Polaroid had become synonymous with the word photograph. The cameras they created in this era were so beautiful and easy to use that replicas are still sold new today. However, things were about to take a turn. The 1980s saw cheap 35mm cameras flood the market alongside 1R photo shops. The combination of the two allowed consumers access to better quality pictures without sacrificing a great deal of development time. In the late 90s, with the rise of digital photography, things went from bad to worse. Polaroid had launched a few digital cameras, but they weren't very successful. And I invite you to look at one and see if you can figure out why. This is the Polaroid Photomax Fun. It is the most drab camera you can possibly imagine and the last thing anyone would ever associate with the word fun. Since the company had forced out its founder, Edwin Land, in 1982, its cameras had progressively become less beautiful and a lot more dull. And this seems to have culminated in the fun. Yet, while drab Photomax funds were withering away on store shelves, Polaroid did have the number one selling camera in the United States out. The Polaroid iZone was marketed towards kids and teenagers and took tiny instant prints that could be used as stickers. The cameras were easy to use and the colorful designs actually looked like something you would expect to have come out of Polaroid. According to the Polaroid vice president at the time, the survival of the company hinged on them keeping the iZone success going for as long as possible. So, they had their best and brightest come up with new innovative iZone products. We have the original iZone, simple, easy to use, cool looking, nice. We have the iZone convertible, which added interchangeable snap-on body panels, cool. We have the iZone with radio, so you can listen to music while you take photos. Wait, what? We have the iZone mini scanner, because children love to scan. <sighs> That's not right. And then we have the piece de resistance, the iZone digital. They took the internals of the Photomax Fun and they grafted it onto the iZone, transforming an intuitive camera with a clear purpose into a complex camera that no one understood. It was shaped like a boppet. It was expensive. It uploaded photos with an audio jack. It was a failure. Polaroid filed for bankruptcy protection in October 2001. The outcome was that within 10 months, most of the business, including the Polaroid name itself, had been sold. The executives who failed to properly run the company took large bonuses while stockholders and employees were left with nothing. There are so many paths Polaroid could have taken that likely would have resulted in the company thriving. They could have invested in instant film products like Polaroid Originals and Fuji currently do. They could have made a proper digital children's camera like Fisher Price. They could have made a digital camera that's true to the Polaroid DNA that would have appealed to teenagers and adults alike. Maybe something that looked like the Polaroid Snap, which is actually a rebranded Kodak Mini Shot. Tell me in the comments what you think Polaroid should have done instead. However, despite all the good options available, they made the iZone Digital their swan song. Subscribe if you want to support the channel and discover more untold and unusual camera stories.